Hello everyone, I am Varun Vats and I am from Public Policy and Sustainability team at Sejanta in Sejanta headquarters based in Basel, Switzerland. In the presentation today, I will be talking about goals and objectives Sejanta has on soil conservation. What is the strategy which company has established for conserving soil and how and what are the plans to implement this strategy and how we are interacting and engaging with other external stakeholders to implement this strategy. <clears throat> so before moving further, I will spend some time in uh, providing a brief introduction about Sejanta as a company, talking about different products and product types we are, are producing as well as uh, um, how we are approaching farmers with our products and what are the uh, major commitments. Sujanta is an agriculture input company. We do produce seed, seed trade and crop protection products. It's a global company in the sense that we are present in 90 countries and there are somewhere around 28,000 employees who are working in Sujanta. We are primarily a research and development based company. Our annual investment budget for research and development activities in 2013 was uh, 1.4 billion US dollars corresponding to around 12% of our total sales and there are 5,000 R&D staff dedicated to produce uh, uh, new seed varieties as well as new crop protection products for the company. The slide here, you will see that how we approach our customers. Our customers uh, are mainly farmers. So how we approach farmers with our products. When we talk about our products, as I said, we are um, an agriculture input company. So we do, do produce seeds, seed care and crop protection products. <clears throat> And uh, in that sense, we have a very broad portfolio. And the advantage we have with this broad portfolio is that we can um, customize our solution. We can integrate different product types to offer to farmers to cater their different needs. And that's what we do uh, for with, with major crops, which are all highlighted here in the outer circle. So in a way, we do customize our solutions, we integrate different product types which we have and offer uh, to farmers to cater their different needs. And just building on, on, on what I said before, because of uh, the fact that we have a broad range of products uh, under, our, under our umbrella and uh, the advantage we have to, to integrate our solutions to provide <clears throat> customize uh, or package solutions to farmer, we can cater both large scale farmers who have land holding of more than 100 hectares, as well as small scale farmers who have land holdings of less than two hectares. And this serves very nicely the ambition of the company, because we do believe that food security should be tackled from all different angles. Every farmer's farmer for us has a role to play in tackling food security. And that's why like we would like to cater 8 million of large scale farmers, as well as we like to target 450 million smallholder farmers. So that was about Sejenta, very brief overview of the company. Now I will move on and explain a little bit on specific challenges which uh, soils are facing, particularly soil in agriculture sector. So the first pressure <clears throat> or challenge for, for soil conservation in agriculture sector is, is the uh, pressure of population. That is the growing population means increasing food demand and as a result of that, there is uh, increasing pressure on agriculture sector, uh, particularly farmland, to produce more in less time. So we are currently 6.5 billion of us on the world. 
planet and there are estimates that uh, the population will will increase to 9 billion people by 2050 so that means every day the world population increases by 200,000 that means 200,000 more people to feed from 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 the agriculture <clears throat> and what we know is the pool of agriculture land is more or less fixed it's not increasing um, at a global at a global level since 1970s. So that means that uh, we have to produce more from less. And when we talk about current population of 6.5 billion, there are somewhere around 900 million of us who are living below poverty line, who don't have sufficient means to satisfy their hunger. And unfortunately, 70% of them are dependent on land. So agriculture today has to feed the current population, including these 900 million people who, who are going to bed hungry, as well as also uh, find out ways and means to feed the, the increasing population or, uh, every, or, or higher population in future so when I say that agriculture land or farmland within agriculture sector are facing this this challenge of feeding more people uh, that's not that's one part of the story the other part of the story is that the agriculture the pool of agriculture land is almost fixed and it's it's shrinking the map you see here, it's a world stress map. It shows impact of climate change on, on world land surface. And the red color dots, they, sh they show the region which will be highly impacted by climate change by 2030. And what you can see here is that these red and yellow color dots, yellow represent by the way, uh, medium impact of climate change they dominate the world land surface in fact the two-third of the world land surface will be impacted by climate change by 2030 what it means it means that there will be less of land will available for for farming activities UNCCD estimates that's United Nations convention to combat desertification it estimates that 52 percent of agriculture land are severely or moderately degraded and on top of that we are losing 12 million hectares of globally usable land every year primarily because of poor management practices so what does this all mean this means that <clears throat> the pool of agriculture land is shrinking I can give you a fact about this which is also shown here at the bottom of this slide that in 1950 one hectare of land used to feed two people. By 2030, the same one hectare of land needs to feed five people. So here is just to summarize major challenges for soil conservation. The first and foremost challenge is growing food demand. We have seen that population is increasing. As a result of that, there is uh, extra demand for food which is putting pressure on soil. Soil plays essential role in feeding world population. And because the world population is increasing, it is putting soils under continuous stress to produce higher yields in less time. The second challenge which we have seen, which is majorly an outcome of uh, growing food demand as as well as also uh, changing climate patterns as the poor management practices when farmers they uh, restore to unsustainable management practices in order to um, to produce more in less time <clears throat> and practices such as imbalanced application of chemical as well as organic and uh, mineral fertilizers, unsustainable tillage practices, uh, extensive harvest activities, 
uh, un unsustainable water management practices in field they these all practices in in totality results in disrupting soil structure and thereby reducing fertility of soil in long run and third and foremost challenge which we recognize in the soil for the soil conservation is a weak understanding among policy makers and major decision takers on what constitutes and affect soil health what we realize is like politicians or uh, international policy for us they have a they have lack of awareness of importance of soil and that that is very much conspicuous if we see at global level that there are very few un backed or international framework working on soil or specifically on soil and this holds true if we come to the national level because at national level at least for me i have seen very few <clears throat> ministries which are working or specifically on soil most of the time soil is tackled within the ministry of environment or ministry of rural development or ministry of food security and as a result of this the policies which are for soil they are many a times action oriented rather than result oriented so we do believe that population pressure is is one challenge which farmland has to face poor management practices is another challenge which uh, farmland has to face and then also like lack of awareness and lack of knowledge about about uh, importance of soil in the political circle that is also a challenge which farmland has to face so coming to our contribution means what sagenta as a as a company could contribute to tackle these challenges to address these challenges we know that we have very less to do on the first challenge that is increasing population and as a result of that increasing food demand rather what we can do is like we could focus on the second and third challenge that is how to help farmers in improving soil management practices and the third one is like how we can through our network and through our engagements uh, advocate right practices or importance of soils and importance of right practices at the policy level as an agriculture input company what we realize is that we have very less to do with degraded lands rather because of our engagement with farmers and our huge network with uh, associations who are interested in the same topic we can enable or help farmers in in preventing further degradation of their farmland and simultaneously we can help farmers in optimizing the productivity of their farmland so this is the these are the two focus areas which we have identified for ourselves to tackle uh, degradation of soil <clears throat> so first one is i will again repeat the first one is prevention of further degradation of farmland how sagenta could could help farmers in in preventing further degradation of their farmland and second one is how we can help farmers in growing more from less growing more of output with less of inputs less of labor less of land less of chemical inputs and less of uh, other farm inputs like fertilizers or farm machinery use etc etc so you will see that these these are these are the the founding stone in that sense or founding ideas for for the company wide commitments which we came up last year so last year in september we launched a plan which is a company wide plan called the good growth plan and within this plan we are making commitments for the company for 
for six areas which are directly or indirectly addressing environmental and social sustainability of farming. You can see all these six commitments are listed here and they are categorized within three pillars. I will not talk about all the commitments here, but just for the interest of audience, I will focus on the commitment which we have on soil. And that is within the pillar which is highlighted in orange color. And this is a pillar particularly about biodiversity, how Sijinta could help farmers in enhancing biodiversity in agriculture landscape. And when we talk about biodiversity, we mean enhancing biodiversity in field and also around field. <clears throat> and the first commitment, which is uh, in the first box within this uh, orange, orange box, it's the commitment on soil, which is titled as Rescue More Farmland. And we are committing to improve the fertility of 10 million hectares of farmland that is on brink of degradation. This is an interesting aspect. When we say a farmland on brink of degradation, we don't necessarily go and analyze each and every farmland. What we see is that if a farmer is cultivating or using a farmland with certain practices, which we do consider uh, through through scientific literature or through our own business experience or through um, NGO recommendation that they <clears throat> are not conducive for soil conservation in, in that particular landscape for the particular crops which farmer is growing, but then we consider that farmland as, as on brink of degradation. That means if farmer will continue to, to, to use these practices on the farmland, then potentially uh, these farmland will, will go barren or their, their fertility will, will reduce significantly. So what we are doing is like to achieve this commitment, we are intervening in farm sector through our network and promoting certain sustainable soil management and use practices. So we have identified few of these practices and which we are promoting through our network to the farmland. So along with conservation agriculture practices, we have also identified few additional practices which when implemented will complement conservation agriculture and these practices are soil nutrient management where we particularly focus on application of fertilizers where we advise farmers how to apply and in what quantity and uh, at what time fertilizers on their soil the second practice which is identified here is control farm traffic movement in the field. Farm machinery traffic, particularly if we talk about conservation tillage, uh, the farm machinery is of heavy weight. And if they are exposed to field repeatedly, they causes this problem, which is called soil compaction, which is compacting this layers of soil uh, and thereby reducing water retention or water holding capacity of the farm. So what we are doing within Sagenta is <clears throat> to advise farmers to control the movement of these farm machinery in, in the field in a manner that reduces the exposure of the field to these machinery. That means less of the farm, less of the field is exposed to these machinery. There are certain lines or there are certain uh, tracks where they should use these machineries rather than like randomly moving them on the field and as a result of that they will see significant change in the soil compaction problem they will significantly reduce the problem of soil compaction in their field as as well as like uh, improve uh, simultaneously they will improve water retention capacity of their field
that means more water will be will be left within the field rather than leaving the field the third practice which we have uh, in here is the water management practices and uh, particularly here we are focusing on optimal water use in the field here we promote precision irrigation or techniques which are for precision irrigation to farmers and when I talk about uh, techniques they are generally drip irrigation as well as uh, sprinkler irrigation so what we advise through our network is uh, uh, our sales network to farmers is is the use of precision irrigation to avoid or prevent uh, erosion of soil as well as uh, preventing runoff from the fields so in total these are the six practices which we have identified for 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 conservation of farmland and uh, all these practices are within the good growth plan within the uh, under the soil commitment and as i said like all the commitments within the good growth plan are measurable and reportable that means we will be measuring progress uh, against these commitments throughout the duration of the plan which is um, uh, for six years starting starting this year to 2020 and we will be also reporting this progress uh, outside the company and to report the progress we have identified performance indicators for each of the commitment and for soil we have identified this particular commitment this particular performance indicator which is which is highlighted here and the indicator is the number of hectares of farmland with at least one of these above listed practices adopted so we say that if a farmer through our efforts adopt at least one of these practices on the farmland then we will report that farmland within the soil commitment so as you have seen that uh, we have identified focus areas to intervene in the farm in the farm sector for soil conservation then we have also identified um, what are the commitments we have to take within the company to to make a measurable and reportable contribution for for those focus areas but simultaneously we also realize that uh, just by us we won't be able to achieve much the target of restoring 10 million hectares of degraded land is a big target and we need support we need alliance we need collaborations with different stakeholders who have same or linked interest for soil conservation and that's why what we do currently is to establish collaborations and partnerships with uh, with these stakeholders so we are aligning at company level with governments we are also aligning with ngos we are aligning with our industry peers as well as aid organizations and what we believe is that together all of us could help farmers in uh, in using their land in the in the best possible manner so i will give you few examples of our external engagements at the global level for this commitment on soil conservation so the first engagement i will talk about is the engagement which sajenta has with United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, that is UNCCD. So for, with the UNCCD, we have established an academy, which we call Soil Leadership Academy. And the purpose of this academy is to train and build capacity of policymakers within the UNCCD circle to encourage them to design new policies or revise existing policies to promote certain 
soil management, sustainable soil management practices in their regions. So the whole idea of this academy is to um, make aware key policymakers and key decision makers uh, about about importance of soil and about how to restore them or how to conserve them in a most sustainable manner and thereby encouraging them to act in their respective regions to through through certain policies to address this problem of soil degradation the academy was launched last year at the UNCCD COP in Windhoek, Namibia and it is partnered by Sejanta and the World Business Council for Sustainable Development with Sejanta as the lead private sector partner as well as a funding partner of the Academy. It is operationalized since January this year and it is tenured till December 2020. It's a three-phase program. The first phase is on collection of the case studies on sustainable soil management and out of this there will be a curriculum which will be developed uh, for for the academy and this particular curriculum will be used to train policy makers the second phase which will be starting from next year onward <clears throat> and will run till 2020 it will be the phase where actual training of policy makers will take place as well as like this is a phase where we expect policymakers to take certain actions to apply skills and knowledge they have acquired in the academy in their regions. And the third phase which will run from 2016 onward till, till 2020 is the monitor monitoring and reporting phase whereby we encourage uh, policymakers to to monitor their activities, respective activities for soil conservation and also to report voluntarily these activities within the UNCCD for what are the follow-up actions they have taken after uh, the completion of their training in the academy. So you can see this whole program is not just about uh, policy influence or it's not just about advocating policy makers on certain management practices. It is very much result oriented. It's very much on like taking or encouraging policy makers for the on the ground actions. And this way we are serving the commitment which we have within the good growth plan on the soil conservation. The second engagement at global level we have is the engagement with the economics of land degradation initiative this is the engagement we, we have since last year and we engaged with ELD primarily because we, we believe or rather we support ELD vision on promoting the value of sustainable land management. We are also helping ELD in, uh, in promoting a case for benefit of actions versus cost of inactions for sustainable land management. And for that, we are providing our knowledge. We are also providing um, our, our best management practices, case studies to, to the ELD to, uh, to support the business actions for sustainable land, sustainable land management. <clears throat> so the Case studies which we have provided to ELD, they are primarily on, on, on the practices which when it adopted at the farm level helps in prevention of soil degradation. They helps in restoring long-term uh, sustainability of soil and also carries uh, economic incentive for farmers. They helps in improving uh, income of farmers through improvement in fertility of soil. So apart from this, we also work with the World Business Council for Sustainable Development to develop the private sector toolkit of the ELD. And the, this toolkit 
which when developed will help in scaling up private sector uh, initiatives on land restoration. So this is a work which is ongoing and we are we are aligned with ELD and the World Business Council for Sustainable Development to, to develop this, this toolkit and thereby also to, to promote it within the business sector. We have also done some joint events as well as some, some joint press releases in several events with ELD. We did this press release where we launched the Soil Leadership Academy together with ELD and the UNCCD where ELD, I remember, they, they did the launch of uh, the first draft of this global report they are preparing on sustainable land management. And that, that was, that was uh, at Windhoek, Namibia in September last year. And apart from these joint events, we also regularly participate and contribute to different workshops of ELD. We were present and uh, were actively participating at, uh, at the private sector toolkit development workshop in March this year, as well as the land for business and business for land workshop in June last year. Another external engagement which we have on the soil commitment is the engagement with the UNGC, that is the United Nations Global Compact. And with UNGC, we are developing a set of global principles for sustainable soil management. The idea is that these principles, when will be developed, they will provide a framework for different sectors uh, to how to manage and use soils sustainably. These principles will be part of the food and agribusiness principles of UNGC. And uh, Sigenta is one of the co-leading partners uh, on the development of these principles along with Mosaic Foundation. It's a very much a multi-stakeholder process in the sense that uh, we are engaging different um, sectors on the development of these principles. We, we are also doing uh, stakeholder consultation in different regions. Uh, we did a workshop in uh, North America and New York earlier this year, then in Europe, in Bonn, Germany, uh, then uh, in March this year, uh, which was followed by a workshop in Singapore, in Asia, uh, and just uh, uh, in September, we will be having a workshop in Nairobi, in Kenya, to gather Africa perspective uh, on these principles. And by the end of this year, we, are, we plan to have one workshop in Latin America. Most likely it will be in Brazil. So the idea behind these principles is like they will provide, as I said, a structured framework for the people who will be using or uh, managing soil. And this will also advocate sustainable soil management practices in policy arena through the UNGC network. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope it was knowledgeable. It provided some information to you and I'm happy to answer any questions you have or take any comments you have on this presentation on, on, on the commitment we have in Sagenta for soil conservation and different practices which we have identified to achieve that commitment and engagements which we are pursuing at the company level for that commitment. So you can reach me on my email which is which is given here at the bottom of this slide. It's varun, V-A-R-U-N dot Watts, V-A-T-S at sagenta.com. So thank you everyone. And thank you for listening to me. And please send me your comments or questions uh, to my email. Thank you.